All right, testing, testing. This is Monkey Mark, and I'm in my uh, I'm in my solar patch studio in Melbourne. And yeah, I'm gonna tell you a little story about um, Miraculous Activist by Combat Wombat. Okay, so we're talking about um, one of the very first tracks, or the very first track that uh, myself and Monkey Mark ever did with the one and only Elf Transporter. Yeah, it's a long time ago. Uh, there's many, many parts of this story, so I'll try and uh, I'll try and keep it short and sweet. But uh, my memory is that me and Izzy had just come back <clears throat> from the desert after a mad sort of activist tour helping blockade uranium mines, Roxby Downs, Beverly Uranium Mine with Uncle Kevin Buzzacott. And also traveling with the um, Bedlam Sound System, Nagusa Nagust, straight out of the UK, who'd all flown to Australia to do some crazy uh, stuff in the desert with Earth Dream, with Robbie Mutoid and all that. Now, Miraculous Activist became into being in the year 2000. And the year 2000 was an interesting year um, to be in Sydney. It was the Sydney Olympics. And a lot of people had actually exodus the, the city. People were being evicted, um, people were being moved off the streets, people were being moved out of Redfern um, because of the Olympics coming to Sydney. We'd uh, come back from the desert and we came to a, uh, this big squatted community, I guess you'd call it, in Sydney on Broadway. There was four squatted buildings and then there was a warehouse at the back that was still abandoned. So me and Izzy squatted the warehouse. And, uh, yeah, we sort of set up shop. We parked a caravan in the back alleys of Ultimo, behind the Broadway squats, and we had a little radio station going, a pirate radio station, where we'd broadcast um, from the back of the squats and also from parties that were happening um, um, on the, up in the Citadel and, and other places. And there was a real thriving kind of community at that at that time. It was the most amazing time I've actually ever seen in Sydney. There was the Aboriginal Tent Embassy happening up at Victoria Park, just up the road, and there was the Recuisine Machine Cafe and Squat Space Gallery, and yeah, just so many kind of DIY community things happening within that kind of inner city um, hub that was we had going and. We ended up squatting the warehouse behind the initial Broadway squats. It was the Pigeon Poo Palace. It was a giant warehouse, an old car mechanic, and it was big enough that we could drive all the buses and trucks and things in to there and um, yeah, and, and set up. So um, a lot of the crew that had been on Earthstream ended up in that big warehouse. Uh, South Sydney Council were very impressed, and they got their own security guards in to guard us. Which is kind of handy, but they could, you know, watch our gear and <laughs> you know, <laughs> scab smokes off the ball, <laughs> whatever was happening. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a really interesting and cool time to be in Sydney. And the activism and the kind of community DIY stuff happening there was was really, you know, really inspiring. And it's probably, you know, what inspired this song in a lot of ways. Now that's actually where we met Mr. Elf Transporter, and he started hanging around with us and. We had a sound system called Labrat Solar Powered Sound System, doing our solar powered thing. And Elf just kind of like fitted in, joined in. You know, we go and do free parties, activist blockade stuff on the street, reclaim the streets, and Elf just started rocking up. And Now, the weird part of this story is that somehow, I think maybe through Elf, we'd been asked to go on a TV show to do a track. And so we thought, well, if we're going to be on TV, we need to mention as many kind of issues, political issues that were close to our hearts as possible. So Miraculous Activists, I guess, gave us the, the room to talk about, um, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of different issues all in one song. Nike exploitation of workers in humane practice. Shell drilling hell along with military tactics. Active fact is whack is Nestle. Lying to mothers telling them not to breastfeed. Continues to sell us what we do not need. You know, we just decided to team up and uh, write some music. And then kind of around that time, Elf, for some reason, had been asked to do 
a performance on TV. It was like some kids' music program on a Saturday morning called Rise TV or Rise Up or something. Uh, maybe it was Channel 7 or something like that. So anyway, they um, we wrote the tune, Miraculous Activist, and then um, we drove our vegetable oil-powered van and our solar-powered recording studio, which was in like a beautiful silver bullet caravan, into the studios and we performed live to air. And yeah, that was Miraculous Activist, you know. That was the beginnings um, of, uh, of that kind of combat wombat political hip hop kind of factor. What a group of kids we sent out into the world. This is the move. This to make you move. It was a funny one because uh, really the whole song was was based around me messing around with a turntable uh, and sampling into my MPC 3000. And it's got this sort of sound at the start that sort of goes, which is basically me on the pitch shifter of a record player, like this record, like an SL1200 record player, like with the pitch shifter and then resampling it into the uh, MPC and then writing a beat over that. And then that was like the music, you know, miraculous, um, a whole bunch of crazy samples, maybe some Bollywood-ish kind of sampling it. I, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, and then we, um, we had met a great guy called John Jacobs, who was like a massive supporter of us in our early kind of activist days. And he got access to this amazing studio. It was the ABC recording studios in Sydney. And we recorded this uh, tune. It was our first time, I think, in a, in, a, in a recording studio. And we recorded it like on this desk that was about as long as a semi-trailer. I think it was designed to take big, uh, symphony orchestras or whatever. It was a huge studio and the vocal booth that Izzy and Elf were in was just massive. You could have, I think it even had a grand piano. I, I can't remember, but it was massive and it was very posh, uh, which was funny for us because we were just like these crazy squat, feral lunatics somehow in this nice, massive, crazy studio. And anyhow, we recorded it with John Jacobs, who at the time I remember saying, um, he was like, um, I hate snares. And I was thinking, well, I'm writing a hip hop song and he hates snares. So we had to have this battle over the snare. He was just like, nah, and like he was like into his kind of like political techno, you know, non bossy posse. That was his kind of thing. So yeah, it was pretty funny. That was a pretty cool experience to, to be recording that song in there. So it kind of went from the, the back alleyways to the TV, to the ABC studios, and then back out on a little DIY self-produced CD, the Labrats um, solar sound system double CD that featured many of our first tracks from many of our adventures. And yeah, then ended up being put out on vinyl. And, um, we thought, well, we've got to get on vinyl. And a really, really good friend of mine, uh, Phil Decht, who was part of Bedlam Sound System, had gone back to the UK. And his crew, Curve Pressings, had bought a pressing plant, I think from Czechoslovakia or somewhere, or maybe Slovenia. And he helped. So they helped us and they pressed this onto a vinyl. And the cool thing was, is because Phil knew all about our whole <clears throat> eco environmental kind of thing, you know, recording on solar and veggie vans and blah, 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 veggie oil power van. Um, he managed to make the record out of recycled vinyl, which was super cool. And it was all recycled vinyl, so it was a mixture between clear and black and came out all kind of kind of cool looking. Um, that was through curved pressings and um, yeah, they're a very limited edition. I don't think even I have one, but there's probably some still out there somewhere in the world. I remember, um, and Dan Conway from, you know, Juju Space Jazz at the time, and maybe Dan could, chime, sorry, Dan could chime in on the story. But from my memory, I gave him a record of Miraculous Activist. And this was the, the very, very start of when FBI Radio, Community Radio in Sydney started. And they needed to see how far their, their airwaves were spreading out. 
and until they worked out how far this got. So Sydney was kind of bomb blasted with uh, Combat Wombat for uh, the the early beginnings of FBI Radio before FBI Radio became officially, you know, on air. You know, and I'd always been kind of writing poetry and doing little raps here and there, but more kind of social commentary um, or artistic inter- interpretations of what, what, what I'd witnessed and what had been going on. So Elf Transporter kind of cemented the, the hip-hop element, brought the hip-hop element um, in, you know, like, I guess a lot more harder and faster than, than I guess the styles that we've been doing before that. But, um, you know, it was, it was a great collaboration and from there, um, yeah, so much more came to be. So Miraculous Activist, the beginning or turning point in Combat Wombat's um, Sonic Adventures. So yeah, that's the miraculous activist story. Um, yeah, made many years ago. I think it was made in about 1999, 2000, um, on an MPC 3000, and I still have the same MPC 3000. <laughs>